Hey guys, in today's quick concept session, let us try and understand the differences between various cloud computing service models, namely infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service. Most of us feel that this is a tough nut to crack, but it actually isn't. But before diving into the topic, let us look into few of the basics. In traditional computing, the application hosting and the data storage happen on a physical device. When it comes to cloud computing, it is the same set of tasks and activities that are being performed, except for they happen on a virtualized platform called as cloud. Our daily drivers such as Gmail and Facebook are really good examples for this. Let us look into Gmail and understand the concept better. How do we access Gmail? We access Gmail through internet through a front-end web application that is there in our laptops. The data storage nor the application are being hosted in our local drives of our laptops. But on the contrary, if you look at the traditional applications such as Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word, the data storage and the applications are there in our local systems. This is the primary difference between traditional computing and cloud computing. Now that we have brushed up the differences between traditional computing and cloud computing, let us look into the characteristics of cloud computing. For this too, let us take the example of Gmail. On-demand self-service. This means that Gmail can be accessed without the intervention of service provider. We can log into Gmail using the web application and start using it right away without having to raise a request and getting it approved from the service provider. Broad access. Gmail can be accessed through a variety of computing devices such as laptops, mobile phones, iPhones, and iPads. Multi-tenancy. As the name suggests, Gmail allows multiple tenants to work on it at the same time. When we are accessing Gmail, there are hundreds and thousands of others who are still accessing Gmail and everybody gets to use the service at the same time. Measured service. This means that even before we start using it, we are well aware of the services and the storage that we are getting offered from Gmail. And not only that we are aware of it and also we can scale it. Now in Gmail's example, the basic G drive storage that we get is 15 GB and we can get it increased based on our convenience and requirements. Now we would have come across this common diagram in our study material, but what does this signify? Yes, this signifies the level of control that each of the service models have. But this diagram is very complex to understand, isn't it? So let's try and decode it. As seen in the previous slide, the cloud computing delivery models are divided based on the level of control of the user in each of the delivery model. We will equate the situation of us trying to eat a pizza with the delivery models to understand the concept better. What are the four ways in which we can eat a pizza? One is to make it at home, where the pizza dove, the topping, the cooking kitchen equipments and the dining table are owned by us. Option two is to do a take and bake where the pizza dove, the pizza batter and the toppings are pre-cooked. We just have to buy them, heat them with the kitchen equipments of ours and use it at the dining table and eat. Option three is home delivery where the entire pizza is already cooked and delivers get, gets delivered to us where we just have to use our dining table to consume the pizza. And option four is the easiest which is dine out. Just have to go to a restaurant and get the pizza and eat. Now if you see the correlation amongst these four, the level of control with the users are reducing or in other words, the level of external control keeps increasing. Now, this is by and large what happens with the cloud computing delivery models as well. If we see on-premise delivery model can be equated with that of a homemade pizza. On-premise delivery model is technically not a cloud computing model because all the components such as application, data, server, storage and OS are managed locally. Organizations that are very large in nature who can afford huge servers and networks and also feel the criticality of data prefer this option. An example for this can be Tally. Next up is infrastructure as a service, which is shortly called as IaaS. This can be equated with take and bake of pizza, where the application, data and OS are hosted on a third party servers and network. This method is mostly preferred by organizations where they feel that they are not able to offer huge set of servers and network costs. An example for this can be Amazon Web Services, where Amazon Web Services already owns a huge set of server farms which the organizations can use on the go and pay per use. Next up is Platform as a Service, which is shortly called as PaaS. This can be equated with that of home delivery of pizza, where most of the components are outsourced to a third party, except for the applications and data, which is hosted on the platform of the third party. This is mostly used by developers who do not feel the need for huge investments on servers or networks. The best example for this can be Google App Engine where the developers can get in and start building backend web applications. The last form of cloud computing is software as a service or shortly called as SaaS. 
This is in fact the most simplest and easiest form of cloud computing and this can be equated with that of dine out of pizza. Here, the entire set of components right from application to network are all hosted and managed by a third party vendor and there is nothing that is stored locally on the user's drives. General public are mostly the users of SaaS services and the best example for this can be Facebook. How do we use Facebook? We log into the web application, use Facebook and close it. It is as simple as that and there is nothing that is stored on our local drives. Now here, I want you to appreciate the fact that as we jump with different service models, the level of control that the users keep diminishing. Now that we have completed the comparison, I have drawn up a table summarizing the differences and comparison with our example, which should be helpful as a ready reckoner. Let us go up from the bottom of the... Now that we have completed the comparison, I have drawn up a table summarizing the differences and comparison with our example, which should be helpful as a ready reckoner. Let us go from the bottom of the control pyramid to the top, starting from on-premises. In on-premises, where we own, we own everything. Now everything includes the application, the infrastructure and the data. And naturally, since we own everything, we also control everything. By managing everything, it means that there is no intervention by a third party and there is no nothing to do with internet as well. The corresponding pizza delivery model would be to cook at home where the entire infrastructure and the raw materials are managed at home and there is no intervention by a third party. When we talk about infrastructure as a service where we host, it includes all the activities that fall under on-premise except it is on a virtual environment. We use the infrastructure of the service provider using internet thereby having a reduced control and savings in cost. The corresponding pizza delivery model would be to use the infrastructure or the basic ingredient which is the dough from the third party and thereby having a partial reduction in the control. When we talk about platform as a service where we build, we develop the application on the platform and the data is being managed on the platform. This gives an immense reduction in the control and also a huge saving in the cost. And the corresponding pizza delivery model would be to buy a fully cooked pizza to our home which is home delivery where there is no control over the taste of the pizza. We just merely get it delivered to our home and eat it. When we talk about software as a service where we consume, there is very minimal or in fact there is zero backend activity at our end. We open the application using internet, use it and then close it. There is zero control with us and thereby having immense cost savings. And what is the corresponding pizza delivery model? Yes, you guessed it right. It is just going to a restaurant and having food there. There's an obvious question that would arise as to why would anyone choose the other service models over on-premise when there is reduction in control? Yes, there's another phase to it. When we own and manage everything locally, there's a huge amount of fixed cost commitments that are involved. On the other hand, when we let third party vendors manage these, the cost can be shared with other users, of course with the catch that there are data security issues which are to be managed. Now in a nutshell, to summarize, the most preferred method would obviously be on-premises provided, provided we are able to accommodate the fixed costs. And the easiest method would be software as a service. Infrastructure as a service and platform as a service are mere in-between tweaks between control and cost. Hope this video helped you understand the concepts better. If you have any questions running in your mind, please feel free to comment it down or pen it to the mail ID given in the description. Thank you. Bye-bye.